Hey guys, and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Tuesday tip. Today I thought I would talk to you about almond leaves or catapa, which are exceptionally popular and have a wide range of applications. Now generally when you Google leaf litter on the internet, you find a whole bunch of anecdotal evidence saying, well, it works for this, it works for that, it does this, it does that. So I thought we'd take just a little bit of a closer look. We'll talk about those common applications as well, but I kind of wanted to figure out why it works. So the most common uses for leaf litter for almond leaves, which are these, is to provide a spawning ground for a lot of different fishes. Um, leaf litter is found in basically every water system in the world and especially in South America where you find epistogrammas and fish like that there is mass quantities of leaf litter and the fish use it as a spawning material. They're actually leaf litter spawners more than cave spawners despite what is often recommended on the internet. It also breaks down and produces microorganisms which feed the fry or other small fish. Um, and it also impacts nitrification and has some other uses chemically as well. So the, the question I get asked most often is, you know, is every leaf the same? What kind of leaves can I collect to use? And the reality is you can use, you know, oak, maple, mulberry, a whole wide range of leaves that you would collect um, fallen, dead, and well dried as long as no pesticides have been used. But I find that catapa are far superior in a few ways. One is that they hold up better, they last longer in your aquarium, and they make less mess. And a lot of that is because they have this very prominent vein that runs through the center of the leaf. And they're almost leathery in, in appearance and texture. So they last quite a while, generally a month, two months. A lot of that depends on your water chemistry as well, what temperature and how acidic your water is. Um, oak leaves tend to fall apart a lot quicker and fall into pieces, whereas these, the leaf part disintegrates over the time and it's very easy just to remove this center vein portion, should you choose to. Um, other leaves that are useful are banana leaves, again dried. Um, basically things like that. There's a ton of products on the market and a ton of leaves being marketed for this purpose now, but my favorite always is hands down almond leaves. Of course you can't be free from collecting your own. But there's a couple of reasons that these are truly superior that aren't just aesthetic. Um, the aesthetic of them, you know, being easier to clean up after and also breaking down slower and they also stay put better in the aquarium are all very valid reasons to prefer them. But there's actually science behind it as well. Now, catapa has been used forever, and not just the leaves, but the berries, the bark, every, the, the green leaves have been used in both traditional and modern medicine since the beginning of time. It is well known that catapa specifically has both antifungal, antimicrobial, and a broad host of different properties that make it really useful for a lot of ailments, both in humans and in fish. It's even used as a palli palliative cancer treatment. And, and why is that? Because as the leaf breaks down, it produces what's called saponin glycosides, which are essentially um, a byproduct of the decomposition of the leaf and those are antimicrobial. antimicrobial. It produces a hydrolyzable tannin, which bonds strongly to metals and detoxifies them. This is invaluable with shrimp. It also binds to calcium ions, which is why it can also soften your water a bit. It also releases a ton of tannins, which some of you may not love, but it is really good, especially for South American and Asian fish. One of the things that it does that's really, really helpful is that um, because it, it binds with those different things and sort of uh, naturally conditions the water for shrimp and fish, it also inhibits bacteri bad bacterial growth in the intestines of creatures, which means that instead of them exerting all this energy to, instead of them exerting all this energy in an immunological response, 
it means all of their energy can focus on growth and reproduction. So it means instead of them, their body, you know, reacting to the environment in order to thrive, all of that, all of their nutrition and energy and everything else can go into being healthy. So it's really great in a preventative. In fact, a lot of fish that come in from Asia and South America will be shipped with, with tannin stained leaf water. Um, and you know, they do really well. It's been known for a long, long time that they're beneficial um, in their sort of soothing capabilities to wounded fish, specifically bettas that are um, used for fighting. Common cure for damaged male bettas is a tincture of almond leaf. So while they are not a replacement for medications in a lot of cases, they can be really valuable as a tool in the fish room as a preventative and a palliative treatment during medication. They are proven to have um, antiparasitic for ectoparasites, antibacterial and antifungal properties. And I can link in the in the description to a couple of papers that you know are specifically on studies of these leaves. Now they're by no means the end all be all in research papers, but I found it really fascinating and it just reinforced the reason why I think they're so valuable. Now when you're going to use leaf litter, you know, you may be tempted to boil them to reduce or remove the tannins, but that really defeats the purpose. You want them to release the tannins and you want them um, to be just totally dry when you put them in their tank. Now they may initially float at first, but after a day or so they generally sink to the bottom. Dosage is another question I get a lot, and I don't really have a good answer for you. Uh, the toxicity studies show that you would need something like 200 parts per million of almond leaf extract at a very pure very pure concentration for it to have any sort of mort mortality or detriment to your critters. That being said, I find that a leaf or two per five gallon is more than adequate. Uh, for some of you that may be working with extreme blackwater species, you can do a very thick carpet of the leaf litter, again for spawning place, for the tannins, um, to soften the water, and to really provide a lot of comfort for what are often shy species. So I'll take you around the fish room and I'll show you sort of what you can expect from tannins and water from them and also what they look like in the aquarium. Interestingly enough, it's been proven that the use of almond leaves, both in the culture of ornamental and food shrimp, greatly reduces uh, the chances of infection and increases the yield of fry. So it, it's you know been in practice for a very long time but the aquarium hobby is always a little slow on the uptake here so this is a 29 gallon tank and it houses a bunch of Araris europhthalmoides as well as my sakura shrimp and you can see i have three or four leaves here in the front and there are critters all over them all in them and it's really really great for these guys the the shrimp have excellent color they're reproducing like crazy and the fish seem pretty happy as well. I also have leaves in this um, Epistogramma tank. These are Epistogramma cockatoides, uh, triple red. See, there's a whole bunch of females out and about. They're yellow and they're looking really good and eventually they'll probably spawn either in any of these caves or underneath the leaf litter. And as these leaves break down, the fry will use it as their first food or as a secondary food to what I offer them. So those are just a few examples of where I use almond leaves around the fish room. I really use leaf litter very heavily. And just to recap, it has a few purposes. It provides cover for young fish. It provides food as they break down. They're a natural spawning media for many, many fish. And they actually have some sort of a scientific purpose that make them superior to the bulk of other leaves available uh, for aquarium use. I hope that helps. Make sure you stop by my Facebook as well as my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. As always, I really enjoy getting videos or pictures from recent customers of the livestock they've gotten. I really, uh, I think it's great being able to share that on my Facebook page so people can see what to expect.
as always if you have any questions or comments or suggestions let me know below